So the way that you find the polynomial approximation, so just instead of it being a tangent line, instead of being linear, we're going to do a polynomial. So you're picking your, basically what would have been your point of tangency, uh, but it's the number we say we're centered around. So you're picking this value C and your polynomial is said to be expanded about C or centered at C. It's like the point of tangency though, same idea, like that's the value where this is. Um, and so your, your function and your first derivative and your second derivatives, et cetera, forever and ever are all equal there. And I just said this when we were looking at the graphs, the higher the degree, the better your approximation. And same thing with the tangent lines. If you wanna do an approximation, the value you're plugging in needs to be close to C. The further away you get, the less good it is. So for example, if you're centered at one, you could do an approximation for like 1.1 or 1.2 or 0 0.9, but the further away you get, the less good it is, cool? So same idea as a tangent line. So here's how you're gonna write out what's called a Taylor polynomial. I guess this guy with the last name Taylor came up with this. It's your function. So the zeroth derivative, like the function itself, over zero factorial and then x minus c to the zero. First derivative over one factorial, x minus c to the one. And then do you see how they're all twos here? And then like, if you kept going, they would be all threes. We're gonna write this out when we do the problems. I just didn't wanna make you write it out in the general form because it looks really weird. And if you're centered at zero, it is what's called a Maclaurin polynomial. So this means that you are centered at zero, which is a really common thing. Um, and so I guess it's named after this guy, Maclaurin. So do you see how instead of X minus C for all these, it's just X to the zero, X to the one, X to the two, because it'd be X minus zero, it'd be X minus nothing. I write this out. This is a Miss Cole thing. This is like my personal thing that I do. I write this out for every problem because this is actually a very easy thing to do, but it's more about staying organized, if that makes sense. Like the math you're going to do is not actually all that hard, but you have to stay very, very organized. Following either. So I write it out every time. If you're comfortable skipping that and just doing it in your head, that's fine, but you got to stay organized. So this says um, for the function e to the x, e to the x is the easiest one to do because what's the derivative of e to the x? And then the second derivative is e to the x and the third. So like, that's why it's an easy one to start with. We wanna find the second degree Maclaurin polynomial. So the way we're gonna write this, p for polynomial, I put a two to indicate it's gonna be to the second degree. And Maclaurin means it's centered at zero, okay? So I am going to write this out and I write it every time. So it's going to be f of zero over zero factorial x to the zero. And then we're going to do everything with ones. So it's going to be all of them ones. It's the first derivative at zero over one factorial x to the one. And now we're going to do everything with twos in it. It's going to be the second derivative over two factorial x to the two. And I'm gonna stop there because it said second degree. Now, usually at that point off to the side, I find all the derivatives. I don't write them if it's e to the x because they're all gonna be e to the x. So I don't bother writing them. But usually at this point off to the side, you would find all your derivatives that you need. Oh, because I just wrote an x instead of a zero. I'm sorry. And why am I putting in zero for all of those? That's right. It's because it says Maclaurin. So we're centered at zero. Okay. So now we're going to actually like evaluate all of this stuff. The function is E. What is E to the zero? One. Zero factorial is actually also one. We don't say that that's zero. And then anything to the zero power is one. So that entire first term is one. Go ahead. You're better off accepting it. It's one. I know I don't really like it either, but you're, you're so much better off just not letting that bother you. <laughs> it's one. All right. First derivative at zero. Again, the first derivative is e. e to the zero is one. One factorial is also one, which bothers me too. Um, and then x to the one. So the whole thing will just be x. It's one x to the one. Plus e to the zero again is one, two factorial is two. So this is one half x squared. And that is your answer.
So again, the math you're doing is not necessarily difficult, but you have to stay organized. And I write this every time. So you could be like, oh, you know, wow, 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 that's a little bit of writing, but you need to stay organized, okay? So for e to the x, and again, I start with e to the x when we start talking about these because it's it's an easier one because all the derivatives are the same. Find the nth degree Maclaurin polynomial. So we just started this. I just want to basically see if you could continue the pattern. It's going to be 1 plus x plus 1 half x squared. What would the next one be? It would be six. That's really good. What math are you doing to get the six? And I'm going to actually just go ahead and write it as three factorial. Once we get above two, I'll usually just go ahead and write it as factorial. And then x to the third. Good. And then what would the next one be? Plus one, four, factorial. Good. Plus, and then we'll do dot, dot, dot. What is the in general form that you would write it in. It would be one over n factorial x to the n. That's the pattern. That one comes up a lot. Here, I'm still doing e to the x. Again, I'm trying to start out with an easier one. We'll do some more difficult ones on the back. But I like this one because all the derivatives are the same. We're going to find the third degree Taylor polynomial. This time, it's not centered at 0, though. This time, it's going to be centered at 3. So I'm just going to show you how it turns out when it's centered somewhere else. I write this every single time. All right, so first we're going to do, and actually let me go ahead and put polynomial with a power of three. That's what that means, polynomial power of three. So you're going to do the zeroth derivative at three. The zeroth derivative is just the function over zero factorial, but it's x minus three to the zero. So instead of just x to the zero, you have to put that in there. All right, plus, then it's the first derivative at 3 over 1 factorial x minus 3 to the 1. And then now we're going to do it all with 2s. So the second derivative at 3 over 2 factorial x minus 3 to the second. And then lastly, you're going to do it all with 3s. So the third derivative at 3 over 3 factorial x minus 3 to the third. That one's like all threes because it's also centered at three. And again, this is my personal preference. And I'm going to suggest that you do this, but at the end of the day, if you don't want to write that out every time, you can actually just jump straight to the answer. I just can't stay organized unless I write that out. So I just do it every time. All right, so now we're going to actually like evaluate all that stuff. The function is e. So if you plug in three, you get... Don't overcomplicate it. What would that be? If you plug in three, get e cubed, which is the e to the third. This is one, this is all one. So the entire term is just e to the third. Plus, first derivative is e to the x. So if you plug in three, you get e cubed. This is one, so it's just the e cubed times x minus three. And you can leave the little one in there if you want to, you don't have to. So this one would be e cubed over two x minus three squared. And then this last one would be e cubed over six x minus three cubed. I don't know what e cubed is without a calculator, so we're just gonna leave that. But again, that's the nice thing about e to the x is all the derivatives are the same. Now we're going to do one where it's not the case. We have to actually find all the derivatives. So now we're doing ln of x, find the fourth degree Taylor polynomial centered at 1. And then I'll grab a calculator for this. We're going to use it to approximate ln of 1.1. The reason you can plug in 1.1 is because it's very, very close to what, where you're centered, all right? So again, you're gonna have to start all the way off to the left-hand side, because this is gonna be really long. And I guess if you really wanna dig in your heels and not write this, you don't have to. You can just jump straight to the answer. I, I will be honest, I struggle with that though, so I have to write it out. So it'll be the zeroth derivative, which is just the function at one over zero factorial x minus one to the nothing. 
plus first derivative at one over one factorial x minus one to the one. And I'm going to stop saying this because I think that that's probably going to get annoying really quick. But I'm going to just write them out all the way up to the fourth one. And the hole in the paper, if the hole wasn't there, I would have gotten it to fit. So I skipped this step when we did e to the x because all the derivatives just are e to the x. So I didn't bother writing them out. Here, we're gonna have to find the derivatives of this function all the way up to the fourth derivative. So I'm just gonna write them out. I usually just do it in the margin or off to the side. I have some space here, so that's where I'm gonna write them. So what is your first derivative of ln? One over x, good. And then we're gonna get our second derivative. So you wanna think of this as x to the negative one. So in your mind, imagine that, x to the negative one. Are you with me here? You would bring the negative down, so you'd have a negative one, and then that's gonna drop to a negative two. So it's gonna be negative one over x squared. And we need to go all the way to the fourth derivative, so we gotta do a couple more. Third derivative, you wanna think in your mind of this as negative one x to the power negative two. Yes, good. When you bring the negative two down, the negatives will cancel. It'll be two, and then it's x to the negative three, so two over x cubed. We gotta just do one more. So in your mind, you wanna imagine this as two x to the negative third. So what's that derivative gonna be? Good, so it'll be negative six over x to the fourth. What would the next one be? Because I want you to try and do the pattern in your head. What would the next one be? Not 12, but six times four, 24 <laughs> over x to the fifth would be the next one. Okay, now we have those. Let's go and fill all this in. So the zeroth derivative, that's just the function at one. All right, guys, what's ln of one? Zero, all right, so that entire first thing is gone. I'm not even gonna write it. You can put zero plus if you want, but it's it's just gone, so, all right? So I'm actually starting with this one. First derivative at one, here's your first derivative. If you plug in one, it'll be one. Over one factorial, which is one, so you really just get x minus one. It's one parenthesis x minus one. All right, plus, now here's the next one. Second derivative at one. Here's your second derivative. If you plug in one for x to the second derivative, what are you gonna get? Good, so it'll be negative one over two and then x minus one squared. All right, third derivative at one. So here's your third derivative. If you plug in one, what do you get out of that? Two, right? Come with me. Everybody's asleep. That part's two. What is three factorial? Six. So two over six is one third. X minus one cubed. All right, and then the last one. We're doing the fourth derivative at one. Here's your fourth derivative. If you plug in one, negative six is this part. Four factorial, that's four times three times two times one. Good, 24. So negative six over 24. Yes, good, x minus one to the fourth. So that's your polynomial. And we're gonna use it to approximate ln of 1.1. So I am going to plug 1.1 into all this. Don't go to sleep, but I'm not going to make you type it. You can just watch. 
And do you notice how the terms alternate? Did we see that? Why are we all so tired? Just for the weekend. I'm sorry. I agree. Yeah, it's probably it's because of the last week. The last week. I didn't even draw anybody. But I, I was in the first place. All right, there we go. 0 0.095. Now I'm gonna show you how you can like shift these and we're gonna do a whole lesson on this later, but just kind of like as a foreshadowing thing. If you wanted to do a Maclaurin instead of a Taylor polynomial, because it's a lot easier to center things at zero than anywhere else, agreed? Okay, so if you wanted to do that instead, you can just shift it over with an X plus one. And basically you're gonna rewrite this if you plug in x plus 1 for x, what is x plus 1 minus 1? Just be x. So you can write out your polynomial as just x, and then this would be minus a half x squared plus a third x cubed minus a fourth x to the fourth. And some people like to do that because doesn't that look a lot less complicated? Right? Okay, so like that's the idea. But when you go to plug in, Instead of plugging in 1.1, you would plug in 0 0.1. You have to adjust what you're plugging in as well. Does this make sense? And if you plug 0 0.1 into this, you will get 0 0.095. So some people prefer that because you can center it at 0 instead. To be honest, I'm kind of just a direction follower. So if it says to do this, I'm gonna just do that to be really honest, but you can do that as well. If you plug in 0 0.1 to this right here, you're gonna get 0 0.095. It'll turn out the same. So just for what it's worth. All right, here we're gonna do cosine. Find the six, you're probably like, why is it the six? I have a reason why, just trust the process on this one. It's gonna be a little bit of writing, but you have to trust the process for me to show you this, all right? So we're gonna do a six degree polynomial. Um, but the saving grace here is that it's Maclaurin, so it'll be centered at zero, right? So you're going to do the zeroth derivative at zero over zero factorial x to the nothing. And yes, try to write kind of small for this one. I barely made it fit. Mine had to like kind of go down a hill. Again, I have a reason why I picked six. You're like, why should you pick six? Yeah, mine had to go down a hill a little bit. Now with e to the x, I skipped writing the derivatives because they're all e to the x. For this one, you're going to need the derivatives. So I'm just going to list them out like right above the problem. So what is your derivative of cosine? Negative sine. Second derivative. So derivative of negative sine negative cosine third derivative so derivative of negative cosine all right well derivative of cosine is negative sine so the negatives cancel it'll just be sine positive sine good and then fourth derivative will be back to cosine and you don't have to write them out any further because then the fifth derivative will be Negative side. Yeah, and then this would be the sixth. And then in theory, this would be the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. Like it cycles every four. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and fill this in. And you're going to see why I made it six.
So the original function at zero, that was cosine. Cosine of zero isn't zero. Cosine of zero is one. And then the rest of this also just all goes to one. So that's just one. First derivative at zero. Here's your first derivative. What is sine of zero? Sine of zero is zero. So that entire term goes away. So now we're on to the second derivative. Here's your second derivative. Cosine of zero is one, but it's negative. So negative one over two factorial, it'll be negative a half. And actually I'm gonna leave the factorial in there and you'll see why as well. One over two factorial x squared. That looks a little messy. Let me write that a little nicer. So now we're on the to the third, uh, x to the third term. Third derivative is right here. If you plug in zero, what do you get? And what's going to happen to every other term? That's why I had to take this out to the sixth, because if I didn't go far enough, you don't see the pattern happening. All right, fourth derivative. Cosine of zero is one over four factorial x to the fourth. Fifth derivative is going to be same as the first derivative. We're back here to the beginning, and it is going to be zero. And then your sixth derivative is going to be the same as the second derivative. Cosine of zero is one, but it is negative. So negative one over six factorial x to the sixth. Look at the pattern. What would the next one be? I want to see if you can keep it going. Oh, well, without, you got me there, technically. That was good. I mean, the next one you would actually write. Eight or one over oh, close. Eight or one over eight. It would be plus one over eight factorial x to the eighth. What would the next one be? Minus 10, one over 10. So here we're given a product of functions. We have e to the x, and then we have f of x, and we're given these values in the function. We have to go up to the second degree, and it's Maclaurin, so centered at zero. So for e, and we have it on the other side of the paper, it's going to be 1 plus x plus 1 half x squared. And if you kept going, it would be 1 over 3 factorial x to the third, 1 over 4 factorial x to the fourth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the reason I stopped there is because it says second degree. So that's your e to the x. Now we're going to do the same thing for f of x, and then we're just going to multiply them together. So for f, it would be 6 over zero factorial x to the zero. So actually that would just be six. Let me just write that a little bit bigger. It would just be the number six, right? Plus, now for the next one, it would be three. Do you see where I'm getting that just on the table? All right. It would be three over one factorial, which that would just be three x, good. And then the third one, it would be negative two here, don't write this. I'll show you what it would look like. Negative 2 over 2 factorial. What would that be? Yeah, there'd just be negative 1 x to the second. Good. All right, so these are your two polynomials. This one's the e to the x. This one's the f of x. Here, let me label that. So this one's e to the x. This one's f of x. We're going to multiply them together but you can't go above a second degree. Because technically, do you get that these could go out forever and ever if you just kept going and you would end up with like an infinite number of terms? You have to cap it somewhere. So we're not going to go past the second degree. So first, let's take this one and distribute it to all three of these. Like we're going to take the one and distribute it to all of these. That would just be six plus three X minus X squared. And then we're going to take this x and distribute it through here. So what would that give us? 6x plus 3x squared. 6x. OK, but I can't do the x cubed. Why not? It goes, it goes past the second degree. So I only distributed it to these two. And if you're like, but what about that third one? I feel like it's left out. Well, remember, there's an infinite number of other terms that we're also leaving out. So it's OK. You just can't go above. You have to cap it somewhere. We can't go above 2. And then we're going to take this 1 half x squared and distribute it 
if you distribute it to the six, be three X squared, and then that's it. You can't go any further because you would end up above a second degree. And then we're just gonna put these like terms together. So how many X squareds have we got? Yeah, five X squared. Three terms with an X squared in them. Combine them, you'll get five X squared. And then nine X plus six. 